is Ben Quillen, and today I'm talking to you about seven things that I wish I knew when I was beginning learning the Welsh language, which would have helped me understand not just the language, but also the culture and country much better. The fake claim of a north-south divide. When you begin learning Welsh on most courses, they frood you, frood is to like a fast stream, you into north or south Welsh. And I find this very troublesome because we don't do that with British English. You don't say, we're going to stream you into south English English or Scots English and that's really about the difference I would say between North and South Welsh. They're clearly the same language, they're mutually intelligible, you don't have any real problem. There's a few dialectical words and for mostly rural and you know country farming things there's much more difference. But if you're not on a farm then there's not really much difference at all and you can spend an afternoon in either one and be fine using the small differences in connecting words that they, they use. And one thing that I found very difficult when coming into Welsh from an American from a bilingual Spanish-English home is there's no standard. So when you're learning Spanish, you have a standard that is used for learners and in the media to project a a standard that prevents it from breaking down into patois in a way. And you have that in English, French, and the other languages that I'm learning on this channel. Dutch, well, especially Hebrew, Ukrainian. These have that formal register where you, you need for the media and so on, especially if you're a learner. That's an issue with Welsh is that it creates this divide and it tries to a pigeonhole you in, for lack of a better metaphor, a narrow valley area. You need a standard for people coming into your country to learn and you need as well for the economically upwardly mobile and aspirational a standard language to aspire to, especially in the media. Now there's nothing wrong with having regional dialects and accents in the media and it should be used because you don't want it all monotone. But when you have it too non-centralized, then it becomes in danger of breaking up and losing a sense of unity and cohesion. And you often get gogs and huntu, north and southerners, throwing back and forth in kind of a parochial jest fest. You get people referencing North Wales and South Wales as if these are distinct polities. And I think the lack of emphasis, the lack of any centralization in the language sphere contributes to that or vice versa. I just found it very frustrating. And if I had known that when I began, I could have acclimatized much better and forced myself to learn more vocabulary from both North and South. So you get like for a fly that buzzes around in the South, it's clarin. And then north, it's Pravina, Prav. And I wish they would just choose one that was the more standard. And not have either north or south dominate. But if I had known that beforehand, what I'm saying is I would have learned more words from both major dialects because I don't want to move to a country and then be forced into saying, well, you have to be entirely in this small area, kind of a Dini Victor Square, kind of a man of a square mile thing and be limited to that without any cosmopolitan attitude. And what Welsh needs, almost like a, a BBC Welsh, standard, which has been very good for English, frankly, and giving an aspirational tone to a register that 
unites people together. So just to be aware of that, there's no higher register that is a standard when you come into the Welsh language. And it will cause you difficulties if you're expecting, well, what is the standard that I use? There is no standard. English attitudes in Wales. Now, there are very many English people who are very supportive of Gamrag, the Welsh language, but there are English people who are quite derogatory toward the language, and there's preconceptions, misconceptions of people thinking that Welsh is just spoken by a few people in the hills in the West, or Welsh nationalists. And Welsh belongs and is spoken in every single place in Wales. Every town in Wales has Welsh speakers, however few. Hey, if you're liking this content, hit that like button. Diolch and Weld, thank you very much. Every place in Wales, it belongs to it as part of its heritage. All of it, and frankly, some places over the border in England have a Welsh speaking heritage. There is also a misconception about the culture of Wales that all we have are just in a steadfold and a few poets and shepherds and it doesn't really understand if you are a nation you have a culture that is rich and distinct from other nations that extends back for thousands of years and welsh has that in abundance you also i should warn you have people who come into wales and who are actively hostile and aggressive towards the language and you have people who come into wales i get that this is insanity raise children in wales and then send their children like 50 miles away to school so that they do not have to learn welsh that is the level of antagonism and often hatred and prejudice toward the welsh language you will notice when living in Wales that the media in England, I mean, it's almost weekly the Welsh language being attacked in the English media. Just stories of people being quite aggressive, calling most people insular and anti-English for having their own culture and expecting other people when coming into Wales to respect it. There's also kind of a condescending, belittling attitude that does not believe that the Welsh-speaking culture is equal to the English speaking culture. I was not ready for the amount of hatred that I confronted from that. If people are complaining of an insular nature, it is because of historical precedent, of it being forced and pigeonholed into a corner that has forced that insularization. And I wish I had known that to understand where certain narrow attitudes within the Welsh culture actually come from. It's from this constant barrage, subtle prejudice toward the Welsh language and what it has caused over subsequent centuries. Not to pick on the English, there are Welsh attitudes that you need to be aware of when learning the Welsh language that are well, I had a friend who lived in an area that was 80% Welsh speaking and his street was, I'm pretty sure, 100% Welsh speaking, Cymru Cymraeg. And I went down with him to the high street in a neighbouring town and he went into a bank and the tiller, I knew she spoke Cymraeg and he spoke English. They spoke complete English to each other and there's this attitude amongst the Welsh that in situations of authority or people you don't know, you just turn to English. And it boggles my mind. I just don't understand it. After centuries of being a subjugated people, they're not even always aware of when they're behaving in a way that's self-subjugating. One thing that's difficult coming into Wales from another culture, especially from a city culture like I am from is that everybody often knows everybody or within two circles, everybody knows one another. And if you've never actually been to a village before coming to Wales, I had never spent more than a few 
hours in a small village, I suppose, my entire life. It's quite intimidating to think that everybody knows one another and people are going to know your business. On the good side, it's not bad having a close-knit community. They are there for you when you need help, which is a bonus. And you do feel more included, and yet, if you don't grow up in that, it is a close-knit community. They have expressions like Dean Duard, uh, a coming man, uh, someone who's a newcomer. And you just have to get used to being a Dean Duard from another culture because you're coming into it. I wish I had someone sit down with me and explain. It's not cosmopolitan, which is very different from what I'm used to. There is also the fact that many of the communities in Wales are so small that people within them will not always realise how small their communities are. Or in the Welsh-speaking areas that Gwynedd, which I love Gwynedd, it's a wonderful place. Most of Wales is not like Gwynedd. And there's this preconception among many of them that, oh, the rest of Wales is like this, when that's not what Wales is like now. It has changed. And Wales is a, a very deeply layered country in its own attitudes toward itself, which I did not understand. Some of the people who are most hateful of the Welsh language that I have ever come across are Welsh. And you need to be aware of that. You will come into contact with Welsh people who have a physical hatred of the Welsh language. But for those who do love the Welsh language, you will come across people who, in situations of authority, switch to English without understanding that they're partaking in what marginalised their culture in the first place. And for me, coming in, it's quite frustrating. But as a fellow human being, I do understand it's it is a social pressure that you feel at all times, and I should not be too judgmental of it. If you grow up in that, you're not going to see how deep the pressure is on you to switch to English, which brings me to Wenglish. Wenglish. I wish someone would have sat down and explained to me Wenglish and what it means and why it exists and for a Welsh learner that you're wanting to hear Welsh and for words that you need to know people are just going to use English and it's going to drive you mad. So there's a whole group category of people that when they're speaking Welsh will say words for like months, numbers, maths, anything banking or science related entirely in English with Welsh through it for the small words. Especially numbers, I mean people won't even use numbers in Welsh for a lot of cases which I'm like what? And then there's the sheer amount of loan words that have become standardized Welsh and you're like well is, is that Welsh or is that English or is it the Wenglish that you're using? The combination, I mean, what is Welsh and what is English now? Is, are you speaking a Patois or are you speaking Welsh? And it becomes quite convoluted trying to figure out if people know a word in Welsh or are they, are they not? proficient enough in Welsh to speak the Welsh or are they thinking that you're not able to speak Welsh and so are they dumbing down their Welsh for you or do they not think that you'll understand them? Is that why they're speaking with lots of English? Over time you'll come to see that for a lot of the times it's not you. In some cases it's them that are not competent and you don't need to think that anything's wrong with you. There's different reasons why different people interject various English words into their Welsh. Um, a lot of it's to do with schooling, I think. A lot of it's to do with a lot of people don't read books in Welsh. Or that they're exposed to so much English on television that Welsh words slip their minds. Or they don't want to sound, and this is a big one that threw my mind for a bit, they don't want to sound too snobby or 
the, this kind of this barrier against being too proficient in Welsh that you sound a bit snotty and and I, d I didn't get that for a long time. You need to you need to understand that if you're learning Welsh, that people actually physically avoid long words in Welsh as though it's uncool somehow or not fashionable. I mean, you would think the opposite, right? But that's just not how it works. And so just be aware that you will have to go and look up words yourself a lot more than if you're learning like, I don't know, Italian or Polish and just going in and talking with people because a lot of important words people just will not say in common conversation in Welsh, they'll just throw in the English word in the middle of Welsh. High culture words, people a lot of the times turn to English and interject it into the Welsh. But it's even deeper than that. People throw in just random English words and you're like, well, well is that, is, which language is that? And, and for a long time, I didn't know. And it's just the case that there are, are lots of words where I, I thought there was no Welsh word for it because I was around groups of Welsh speakers and they just kept using the English word for it. And I was like, there's no Welsh word for that. It's just really frustrating and to clear up your journey. You need to be aware of that. For words, you're going to have to look up a lot more in Welsh what it actually is than if you're learning some other languages because so many of the native speakers in Welsh are just not going to speak Welsh all the time. They're going to speak Wenglish. One tip that I wish someone had just shown me because there's something like 24 or 26 ways to say yes and no in Welsh is that the past tense in Welsh is really simple. No in the past is novo for everyone who's doing it or done it. Do is yes for everyone who's doing it or done it. And those two sounds, the da and the n, those will transfer into almost all of the other ways to say yes and no in Welsh for when you're learning the pronouns attached to them and so on. So learn these two to begin, and you can kind of use these to get by and you'll be able to understand a lot of conversation because most of the answers to questions for yes and no are in the past anyway. So learn those first. And I wish someone had told me that because getting that duh and na sound into your head as the answer to a question really helps you later on. the bones of the language. I wish Moore had sat down and explained that Welsh has a serious amount of Latin and Germanic roots. Not so much Germanic, but it does have early Saxon influence. But Latin and French as well attached onto that. I have a video on that, the various influences that went into Welsh. But Latin plus French probably accommodate over 30% of the vocabulary in Welsh. The word for feather in Welsh is plien. In French, it's plume. Very similar. I wish people would explain that more. The roots of this language, if you understand just some of the very basic roots, then a lot makes more sense. As well, some suffixes and prefixes correspond to Latin suffixes and prefixes that you use in English. And if you know these little parts that fling onto words, your journey is a lot quicker. And I think we should teach this more to show people that are learning Welsh, we are deeply connected, especially to the Romance languages. 
In many cases, in some cases, we are far more like the Romance languages than Irish. A quick tip I wish someone had just told me is that for masculine and feminine, which affect the mutations, triliglata and treglo to mutate, which changes the beginning of words, there are set ways to know just by looking at a word if it's masculine or feminine. Most words ending in A-E-T-H, except for llaith, because that's liquid, which all liquids are masculine. These words are almost always feminine because in Indo-European languages, they come from the abstract base. So most words for like philosophy and arts and structures of that nature, studies are feminine because they're abstract concepts. Most words ending in AD or IAD, like Todd is father, connect to physical things or events. Digwithiad is event. And these are masculine, except for glod, which is feminine. And that is a nation, a country, which in itself is kind of an abstract concept. So that's a good way to remember that it's feminine. And just remember these two. There are a lot more that you can easily fit into a category of masculine and feminine. And once you learn these, it becomes very easy to know which words cause mutations in certain circumstances and shape the sentences differently. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video. Let me know in the comments if there are any things that you would like to know when you're learning a language, or if you learned Welsh or are learning Welsh, what things do you wish would have come up beforehand? Let me know. And as always, thank you very much for watching. We'll see you next time.